Hey everybody, welcome to another one of my 40k videos. This one we're talking about Imperial Knights again from the latest edition of White Dwarf. No new rules in this one except for how to play a card game. But it explains a lot more about the history. Specifically, they're talking about knightly houses and heraldry. So let's just start the reading. After that, there will be another video on free blades, which are basically knights that leave their houses and go and become ronin or things like that. So we begin. Knights and houses and heraldry. Long before the rise of the emperor and the birth of the imperium, humanity reached out to the stars, eager to occupy new worlds, and even a cursory glance at the imperial knight models shown throughout the codex Imperial Knights, the Imperial Knights Companion, or even this magazine, reveals a wealth of heraldic imagery, quite unlike anything else within Warhammer 40,000 universe. As we began to read more about knights and their noble houses, and then build our own Imperial Knights models here in the White Dwarf Bunker, it became clear that there was a lot to learn. We spoke to Tammy Nichols, a key part of the team that developed the imagery and heraldry of the Imperial Knights. For months, she was steeped in heraldic lore. Quote, Our goal with Imperial Knights was to present a full and evolved culture as possible, Tammy says. The knightly houses find their origins thousands of years before the Imperium. So it's important that we present a visual language that looks like it evolved through time. Take, take the house crests, for example. Each began as a simple device, such as the white horse of House Terran. Over the millennia, new alliances and significant events caused it to evolve into something grander, reflecting the complex relationship between the knightly house and the Imperium itself. Using Terran as the example again, the white horse is symbolically linked to a vision that the house founder had way back in its dimmest past, Tammy adds. Over the millennia, more heraldry, such as the helm above the crest and the swords behind, were added, symbolic of an ancient battle. As with the house name, later, when... Something Terran swore allegiance to the Imperium, the crest was marshaled, with the half aquila falling on the right side and resplendent eagle wings as its supports. This half and half shows the observer the relationship between the knightly house and the Imperium, and the dichotomy of loyalty to their house and the wider Imperium. Each of the knightly houses we have portrayed have a detailed history, Tammy adds, and you can see subtle nods to events in that history in the crest and the secondary devices they employ. And these are often very grand, with a mythological appeal. House Griffith have their war dragon, wars against dragons in their ancient history, and wear dragons as their crest as a result. What truth lies behind that symbol is now the subject of legend as much as historical fact. But to the warriors of House Griffith, it's very important. Essentially, the same is true for Adeptus Mechanicus aligned houses, says Tammy. Their imagery tends more towards the industrial, which with harder edges to their designs. Tools replace the swords and axes and other of other houses. In place of Imperial Aquilas, these Imperial Knights wear the half cog. The same dual split remains here, with loyalty divided between the house and the machine cult. Finally, each Imperial Knight has the right to wear his own personal heraldry. Tammy adds, those of Imperial aligned houses wear this on their front right shoulder pad. The form it takes is a matter of personal choice, although different houses have their own traditions. Adeptus Mechanicus aligned houses don't typically bother with this at all. The nobles from houses such as Crast and Raven are willingly subsumed 
and don't fear for their independence. Okay. House Raven. House Raven is foremost amongst the nicely ha knightly houses aligned to the Adeptus Mechanicus. Their ancient alliance has brought about was brought about when a lord of House Raven witnessed the Magi of Forge World Metallica rouse to life knight suits that had lain inoperable for centuries. The seat of Raven's power is their indomitable fortress known as the Keep Inviolate. A foreboding, st foreboding structure on the night world of Colossi. The full house crest of Raven bears homage to their heritage with the dual image of the Keep Inviolate and the Opus Mechana. House Griffith. In the earliest days, House Griffith fought many battles against the deadly dragons that inhabited their world. This desperate struggle served to harden the nobles into skilled and fierce warriors. Millennia later, Griffith is sworn to the Imperium and has earned a reputation for producing some of the most formidable warriors ever to sit upon the throne Mechanicum. The heraldry of House Griffith is halved with a dragon motif connecting to their ancient history and a red-winged aquila professing loyalty to Terra. Wow, there you go. Okay. So that gives you a little overview of the Society of Knights and what they have planned with that. And that if you're going to buy one of these $140 figures, you're going to have to paint stuff on it. Apparently. Uh, next, I'll be talking about free blades, which are those knights that apparently leave their houses and go off on some tragic story of redemption or troll slayers, things like that. See you next time!